Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Steve Stevens. Uh, I'm uh, a cardiology fellow at the Cedar sinai Heart Institute, and uh, this uh, is a study actually done during my uh, residency at the uh, uh, University of California, San Francisco, uh, with mentors uh, Nelson Schiller and uh, Mary Hooley. Uh, this is from the uh, Heart and Soul uh, database, uh, which is uh, 1,024 uh, patients with uh, stable uh, coronary disease that were seen in ambulatory clinics in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, w what we uh, uh, look to find is in patients with intermediate curation uh, uh, prolongation. So this is patients with a QRS of 100 to 120 milliseconds, uh, if that predicted uh, bad things, uh, particularly heart failure, uh, as these are patients without uh, known heart failure. Uh, and uh, little is known about QRS duration uh, when it's less than 120. We certainly know that over 120 left and right bundle uh, branch block uh, predicts uh, bad outcomes. It's been shown in Framingham and so forth. But for this, uh, we don't really know what to do uh, with this information when we see a QRS of 111 uh, milliseconds or so. So uh, the uh, 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 outcome we found was that uh, it strongly predicts heart failure. Uh, looking at the gross numbers, uh, the 29% uh, of patients with intermediate QRS duration develop uh, heart failure uh, being uh, uh, quantified as heart failure exacerbation requiring hospitalization. 29% uh, of them had this within five years, uh, where it was only 12% uh, in patients with narrow QRS. Now, this is a higher risk po population because they all have known stable coronary disease, so they are prone to heart failure, but 29% seemed excessive. Uh, and then when we uh, looked at other uh, markers such as uh, echo findings in BNP, uh, it actually adjusted and was still significant, uh, the hazard ratio being 2.8 uh, 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 with, uh, uh, with just adjustment for age, and then uh, after adjustment it was 1.9 uh, with a p-value of 0.03. Uh, and then uh, looking at uh, the echo uh, markers, it correlates with uh, LV mass and uh, low ejection fraction, uh, less than 50%. Uh, it's uh, strongly correlated with, uh, but still independently predicts uh, when those are put in a model. Uh, and those uh, echo findings, uh, uh, we think is that this is showing overall that there's scar uh, and uh, hypertrophy in, in, in the left ventricle, and that's what's causing the QRS prolongation uh, and making the patients higher risk for uh, uh, heart failure exacerbation. Uh, and there's also a trend towards mortality, but uh, it's not underpowered to find that. Um, and I would imagine there's a risk of sudden death, but again, it's underpowered to find that. When you uh, see a 12 lead EKG with an intermediate QRS duration, that that's not a benign finding uh, and uh, that uh, people should take that seriously. This is a high risk patient population that's going to be at risk for bad outcomes in the future and they should be aggressively medically managed uh, to prevent uh, those events.